Have you made the big decision that it's time to add a new dog to your home, but you're not quite sure yet what is the right breed for you? Well, in this video, we take a look at two breeds that could be your perfect canine companion, the Basset Hound and the Corgi. Welcome back to the Fenrir Basset Hound Show. If this is your first time here, my name is Franny and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Basset Hound Show. So let's dive into today's video where we will be comparing these two beautiful breeds. The Basset Hound's history dates back to the 6th century. Their ancestors were the Laconian Hounds. The Laconian Hounds were used for hunting as they were appreciated for their incredible sense of smell. Later descendants of the Laconian Hounds were the St. Hubert's Hounds. The St. Hubert Hounds were bred at the Benedictine Abbey of St. Hubert around 1000 AD. The Basset Hounds that we know and love today are descendants of these St. Hubert Hounds. The word Basset means low, referencing them being so low to the ground because of their small legs. The Basset Hound was originally bred for the French aristocrats by their incredible ability for scent work. They were used in many hunting outings to track rabbits and hares. The Basset Hounds would scare the small animals out of the brush and when the small animal tried to escape the hunt, the Basset Hound would quickly grab them and keep them pinned into their mouths until the hunters arrived. To give it their full name, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a dog with an interesting background. Historians believe that the Corgi is descended from Valhuns, who were Swedish cattle dogs that were brought to Wales by the Vikings in the 9th and 10th centuries while others believe them to have been descended from dogs that were brought to Wales by Flemish weavers in the 12th century. The exact origin remains debated and still unknown. The UK Kennel Club first recognised corgis as purebred dogs in the 1920s. They were officially known as Welsh corgis when exhibited for the first time in 1925. There are two recognised breeds of Welsh corgi, the Pembroke and the Cardigan. At that time they were recognised by the UK Kennel Club, both Pembrokes and Cardigans were shown in the same class of one breed. Over a decade later in 1934, both the UK and American Kennel Club recognised the Pembroke and the Cardigan as two separate breeds. When we think of a corgi today, most people think of the Pembrokes as they have slowly gained in popularity in the United States of America and today have cracked the top 50 most popular dog breeds. One of the main reasons they have become so popular and well known is because of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who received her first Pembroke Welsh Corgi from her father, King George VI, in 1933. After falling in love with her first corgi as a young girl, the Queen went on to breed and own over 30 corgis in her life. The Basset Hound is known for its long ears and wrinkled face, however both of these features are for function rather than aesthetics. Their wrinkled skin is used to trap the smell of the scent they are tracking. This ensures that they can search for hours at a time without ever forgetting the scent. Their large ears act as a barrier against the wind when they have their noses to the ground and stop potential DNA from blowing away. The significant functional feature of the Basset Hound is its tail. Their tail stands upright and this is so hunters can see exactly where they are during the hunt. They have a short coat that can be found in a variety of colours including lemon and white, tan and white, red and white and also tri-coloured. You may find them in blue in some areas of the world, however blue is an undesirable colour in the UK as it is known to come with multiple health issues. The Basset Hound should look muscular and never be overweight. They are a medium sized breed and will typically not grow taller than 15 inches and will usually weigh about 53 pounds. Females will tend to be a little smaller. Corgis are also described as being quite sturdy and athletic despite their small size. They are quite long for their height, in fact they are probably twice as long as they are tall. They have pricked ears, a pointy muzzle and features that have been described as fox-like. Despite their bodies being low, they are strong and sturdily built which allows them to still be active. They were originally built for herding as they are naturally athletic dogs. Corgis have a medium length dense double coat. This means that the coats are double coated with a thick undercoat covered on top with another layer of long weather resistant guard hairs. Their coats come in different colours, red, sable, fawn or tricolored, which is a combination of red, black and tan. They usually have white markings on the neck, chest, belly and muzzles and they typically stand up to a height of 12 inches at the withers and should weigh no more than 30 pounds. 
Hey guys, a really quick message and I just wanted to let you know because we get a lot of questions about you wanting to see more videos of me and the team training dogs, real life sessions, our consultation work, puppy training through to behavior modification and we have a whole dedicated channel for that called Fenrir Canine Training. There'll be a link in the description box below and if you want to come and follow our journey of working hands-on with dogs and watching live sessions of how we go from teaching basic stuff with puppies all the way through to extreme behavior modification modification that's over on the Fenrir canine training channel I'm sure you'll love it and I can't wait to see you over there as well the Basset Hound is a sociable breed that naturally gets along with everyone they enjoy play sessions both indoor and out and having been bred to be working dogs they are naturally active and require at least one hour of exercise a day they need an owner who has plenty of time to commit to training. They love to please their owner, so obedience and manners are relatively easy to teach. However, toilet training is sometimes difficult as they can have a stubborn streak. The best approach for training is consistent positive reinforcement, so plenty of positive praise and of course the odd treat will always help. Short bursts of training work best rather than long sessions as the Basset Hound can become bored easily and then they will stop listening to you in the future. The Basset Hound naturally has a high prey drive and if they may not listen to you, they can catch the other scent of a small animal, so it's essential to teach them perfect recall before you consider letting them off the lead. When having a corgi, it's important to know that they are strong individuals with a mind of their own. They were originally used for herding but became popular family companions due to their loyalty and trustworthy nature and their desire to please their owners. They are known for being happy, loving and intelligent but at the same time can be stubborn and independent. They are easy to train but don't expect them to always do as they're told as they like to think for themselves. Although they want to please their owners, food is a big motivator for them when training. Corgis also make good watchdogs, they are naturally suspicious of strangers and will be quick to bark if they feel something as someone is threatening their home and family. Like every dog, the corgi needs to be socialised at an early age. You should expose them to as many different people, sights, sounds and experiences as possible as socialisation will help your corgi puppy to grow up into a well-mannered family companion. As we have already touched upon, the Basset Hound gets along with everyone. This is because they are a gentle and loyal breed who are particularly affectionate with small children. They can grow to quite a large size, so be careful around small children and so there's always potential for accidents and a Basset Hound knocking over a child could lead to injury. Their loving and loyal nature also make them great companion dogs for the elderly. It is still important you socialise your Basset Hounds to different people, animals, sights and smells so they become a polite, well-rounded dog. This also helps them accept other dogs and animals into the household. It is wise to remember though that Basset Hounds were originally bred to hunt small animals, so it's best that you do not leave any small animals alone with your dog. This breed shouldn't have any issues with other dogs as they are bred to hunt in packs together. Corgis are great around children, but thanks to their herding instinct, they sometimes nip at children's feet or ankles, especially younger children. Corgis are however keen to learn, and this behaviour can be trained out of them from a young age. As you should with any breed, please make sure you also take time to teach children how to approach and touch your corgi. They are probably better suited to families with older children. They usually are good with other pets in the household, so long as they have been well socialised. If they are not socialised, they can be a little aggressive around other dogs. They get on well with cats if they have grown up with them, but would happily chase off and scare cats or small animals that they do not know. The Basset Hound and the Corgi are two excellent choices of family companions. Both are ideally suited to homes with young children. However, the Corgi will need a little more training to stop them nipping at feet. They are both intelligent dogs with a potential for a stubborn streak. There is a difference in size as the Corgi is a much smaller looking breed. However, either would make a great choice for you and your family. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure you hit that like button. Get involved in the comment section down below. And don't forget, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe as we have two dedicated Basset Hound videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Basset Hound Show.